Hi again. In this video, we're going to take a look at both the sine distance field surface shader as well as the sine distance field mobile surface shader. Now, in order to do so, we need to change our scene. So we're going to go in our examples, scene, and we'll load the surface shader example. Uh, let me pull out here and explain what we've got in our scene. I will quickly hit uh, uh, switch to game view and I'm going to hit play so we can take a look at our scene. So what we've got here is um, a bunch of point lights. Um, if I actually go to the top view and zoom out a little bit, we've got a group of point lights, three of them sort of moving in and out, uh, affecting and lighting the text object. Behind, we have a spotlight that's sort of panning across the text object is roughly where my mouse cursor is. Um, that was my PC, uh, I guess, Windows or Microsoft wanting to talk to me. Um, so, uh, or installing a patch or whatever. So what we've got here is uh, our spotlight panning across and we also have one directional light sitting right over here. So let's go back to game view. So what we've got here is our normal text object using our normal distance field shader. Now, as you can see, this text object is unaffected by scene lighting, uh, which is what the typically unlit shader does. So it's always the way it is, regardless of scene lighting. Now, the advantage of using a surface shader is if I switch to the surface shader here, Text Mesh Pro, distance, sign distance field, surface shader. Now, as you can see, this object is now being lit by the scene lights. So as our point lights move in closer or further away, and as they get close, we get these cool color effects, including, you know, the sort of the highlight as the lights get closer. If I uh, turn to the back of the object, we can see that as our spotlight hits the text object, it gets all the lighting contribution, which is really cool. Now, uh, speaking about the shader itself, this is a pixel lit shader. Uh, in terms of performance, the surface shaders aren't really designed uh, for mobile usage. Although mobile devices are getting faster and faster, uh, this shader is OpenGLS 2.0, so it will actually run on an iPad 2 and older devices. Uh, but you know the performance, uh, they're going to be struggling. Uh, now, on the flip side, on an iPhone 5s, for example, I'm pegging um, if I'm setting a target frame rate of 60 frames per second, I'm basically still hitting 60 frames without any issue uh, with this scene. So as devices get faster, it will be a lot more feasible to use these types of shaders. Uh, the other contributing factor is surface shaders look nice or the objects look nice when there's a bunch of lights affecting them. And sadly, multiple lights also hamper uh, performance on mobile devices. So it's a combination of all these things, but hey, they're really cool to look at, but they shine best on desktop. Now, let's look at the shader. So similar to our surface shader, um, it has all the major uh, feature group, but it does not have the underlay group. That's because this shader, if I select the object and say cast shadow, is in this case, we have our directional light. It will, the text object will cast shadow in our scene. If we were in, uh, right now we're in forward rendering mode, but if we were in deferred rendering mode, uh, we would basically see multiple shadows as a result of our uh, point lights moving in and out. Um, so let's disable the shadow again, just for the sake of it and focus on our shader. So um, each group is pretty much identical with the exception that uh, we now have this gloss panel uh, in the face, for example. So if I move closer and I play with this, we can go and make the object um, sort of very like not glossy where it will look like super bright because it's absorbing, not absorbing, but reflecting all the light versus here where we can see the effects. So you can play with this to get different effects. And as I, if I was to turn on beveling, uh, for example, oh, I'll explain that shortly. So we have the gloss for both the face and the outline, um, which as you can see here, the light's really affecting the outline here. It's more as the light hits it. Um, you'll see there's no enable disable 
uh, feature right now for Bevel. With the surface shader, Bevel and all the Bevel uh, related functions are always on because um, that's required to use the scene lighting. So if I was to expand beveling, um, right now we're not seeing any beveling because the bevel amount is at zero. But if I was to move it up, we can see that now we're getting, um, let me zoom into the text, we can see now that there is some beveling going on and you can see it in the highlights as the lights move across the object. Um, so if I was to go to lighting here, you can still control the specular color. Uh, bump mapping is still uh, effective. Uh, so if I was to go back and pick, uh, well, let's pick a different one. I don't have many in this uh, scene. So I'll just pick this one and apply it to the face. You can see now how with the normal map, it's actually affected uh, significantly, which looks pretty cool. I'll let you experiment with the shader, but it's really nice. Um, so again, same feature set, but it has the gloss on both the face and the outline. Now, um, I talked about the mobile version of it. So what we're going to do right now is I'll remove this function here, and we're going to switch to the mobile uh, actually, before I do that, let's turn on the spotlights just for fun and let's disable the point lights. Now, in the case of the, uh, and let me, sorry, turn off our bevel amount. Just make the text back to flat. Okay, so as you can see now, I've switched from the point lights to a group of spotlights. So we have red, green, and blue, and as they move, uh, back and forth, they hit the face of the object. And let me turn off the directional light. So we had the full effect of the lights themselves. And there's the spotlight in the back uh, still doing its thing. So in the case of the surface shader, the object is affected by not only the, the distance of the light to the object, but as well as the direction of the light itself. So the cone angle as it hits a part of the object that becomes it becomes lit and then it gets and you can see actually the shape of the cone hitting the object which is pretty nice now if I'm to switch to the mobile version if I go to text mesh pro mobile and I apologize because on the right side is where I'm selecting it and you can't see it it's outside the recording area but I'm going to pick the other one which is the mobile surface shader now this one instead of being pixel lit it's vertex lit now we're going to observe a strange behavior right now as the spotlights hit it it seems to be taking the contribution uh, and, and kind of popping and if I go to the back it's going to be easier to see what's going on I don't know if it's a bug um, and let me actually switch the shader on the cubes or the crates to the mobile uh, diffuse which is also a vertex lit you'll notice that as the cone of the spotlight hits the cubes they're either fully lit or not so it seems like the vertex lit shaders uh, of unity they do consider distance of the light to the object but as the object hits I, I guess the the bounding volume of the mesh it's either fully lit or not based on the distance direction or the shape of the cone is not affecting it I would have presumed that as it hits being, being vertex lit as it hits the different uh, vertices that it would basically blend and we, we'd still get something decent. This popping's kind of weird. So I will see what Unity has to say. Uh, if that turned out to be a bug and it could be fixed, that would be like really cool. But moving on, I mean disable these spotlights and switch to the point lights, which makes it kind of cooler and more usable. So uh, despite this bug, basically. So uh, let me switch the crates back because that's annoying. So now as you can see, as the points move closer to the face of the object and move back out, we are not getting this popping. It behaves uh, a lot more appropriately and it looks really nice. Now, on, uh, in terms of its performance, this uh, mobile surface shader has a limited feature set uh, similar to the normal a distance field mobile shader uh, doesn't have uh, underlay because it can also receive uh, if I was to turn on the directional light that would help 
Uh, you can see that it can still cast the shadows within the scene, which is kind of nice. Uh, let me disable shadow again. Uh, unlike the full surface shader, this vertex lit one, in terms of performance, is a lot better. So even on an iPad 2, it runs smoothly, it runs nice, meaning the number of, again, scene lights that you have affecting it affects performance. But unlike the full-fledged one, where I don't think it's that usable on an iPad 2, for example, I think this one's really usable. You're just going to have to be careful uh, and manage your scene well and number of lights. But it works, looks cool and objects certainly feel like they belong in the scene using that. Um, so this one, similar to the other one, um, it, you know, you can affect the thickness, all the different stuff, the glow still works, um, so it's kind of neat. So anyway, so that's sort of the summary and, and a rundown overview of both the sign distance field surface shader as well as the um, mobile surface shader. So if you have any questions, feel free to post. Um, otherwise, you know, thank you for watching.